Hey everyone, welcome to Paul Workshop. Over the last several months, I've been working on a fairly large project. One of the videos that I had published was on a studio desk, and then I followed up and did a video on adding a drawer to it. Well, one of the other things that I'm working on now is a craft table that's actually 42 inches wide and 72 inches long. And today I'm putting the trim on that tabletop and building a bookcase for it, which is one component, and in the next video, you're going to see a five drawer cabinet that's going to go on the other end. So I hope that you stick around for this whole series of videos on being able to put together this whole entire art studio complete with the centerpiece being this craft table. I have the tabletop clamped into my workbench vise, and I have used this method a lot for being able to trim down uh, different sizes on the doors. But I use this little trick right here with the popsicle sticks to keep from twisting that uh, workbench clamp. And that works real well. The material that I ended up deciding to use on this tabletop is the melamine uh, pre-glued iron-on trim. And this actually works very, very good and it looks very professional. I had considered several different uh, options as far as possible of putting on different types of wood trim but in the end I thought this was the best solution. This is the edge banding that I'm using and I've had this for actually quite some time and this is a partial roll and I'm hoping that this is going to be enough to finish it so that I don't have to go out and buy a new roll and have it in the shop for uh, a couple years who knows but this is the edge banding we're going to measure it out and see if it's going to fit. The edge banding now is complete and I did have enough to be able to do all four sides and it looks absolutely fantastic. This is better than I had hoped for so I'm very pleased with this and the good news is I had some left over. This is the piece that I had left over so I think that was pretty close of an estimate on being able to use all the scraps that I had in the shop. Not bad. So I absolutely love how this top turned out with the edge banding on it. All I have to do now is set it aside so it doesn't get damaged. Build the bookcase end on this uh, particular craft table. There's uh, quite a bit of plywood that needs to get cut. Now, I know cutting plywood in a video gets a little bit old. So this is going to be the only sheet that I'm going to show you that I'm cutting. And yes, this is a full sheet that I'm cutting by myself in the shop, which presents a little bit of a challenge in itself. But again, this is going to be the only time that you see me cut a sheet of plywood in this video, even though there's a lot of plywood that needed to be cut between the cabinet itself for the bookcases along with the shelves themselves. To be able to cut a sheet of plywood like this in a small shop, you have to be able to pre-plan a little thing to make sure that it works. One of the things is all of the uh, different tables that I have are set for the height of the table saw itself. Now my workbench, which is doubling as an outfeed table, again, same height as the table saw, and the support this edge so it doesn't drop on the floor, that is the router table, same height. Now that I have that plywood cut, I can start cutting the sides. And I always cut one end a little bit long just to be able to clean it up. Because recently I have found not only is the melamine and the plywood edges of the manufactured edges, they are very, very rough. So I have to be able to cut literally all four sides of the plywood to get a nice, pretty, sharp, crisp edge. Now that I have it pre-cut, well, about an inch or so long, I can put in the little stop block on the fence, measure out exactly the size that I need, and be able to cut it. So that's the process that I go through when I cut out any type of cabinet, bookcase, whatever it happens to be when I'm using the plywood. As far as the dust collection, when I was cutting that full sheet, you saw that I had the dust collection on the table saw. Now with the table saw sled in place that you're seeing here, I actually took the dust collection off just so you could get a little bit better view. 
But if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I have dust collection that is actually uh, works extremely well on this table saw sled. But now having done all of these basic cuts with this table saw and getting these areas roughed out, this is the last you'll see. The design of this cabinet has all exposed edges and the plywood edges look really bad. So in that case, I have chosen to use this wood veneer, iron-on, pre-glued material, and it is an amazing product. I don't use this very often because most times I'll use a face frame for the different cabinets and bookcases. But for this particular design with the exposed edges, this is the best route to go using these uh, veneer iron-on pre-glued uh, strips. They work fantastic. Now, if you've seen some of my videos in the past where I've used the uh, iron-on material, you know I use this uh, heating iron, and this actually was used with the model airplanes when I used to put the monocoat onto the uh, bodies of the plane. But this works much better, I must say, than using the wife's iron. But if you have to use the wife's iron, you might want to consider getting her a brand new one so you have a dedicated iron in your shop. Once all the edge banding is on and everything is sanded, it's time to pre-paint. And this is something else that I typically do not do. But pre-painting everything has worked out real well and it makes painting much, much easier. Again, everything is pre-assembled before the gluing and nailing just to make sure that it all fits. Now I still need to put a strip in across here and I need to fill in this area here because I need this support to be able to put these wheels mounted in this area. And rather than just putting a block in, I'm going to put a strip all the way across on the top and bottom of this bottom shelf. And that will give a lot of support for these wheels. So this wheel is a heavy duty. I'm going to have one on this side. And of course, I'll have one on the other side also. To be able to support this. Now this is part one. This is one side of the table that I'm having and the other side is going to be a series of drawers. This is the wheels that I'm going to be installing and it's a heavy duty wheel and it will definitely take the support of this bookcase and on the other part of it it'll be able to support the drawers that I'm going to have on the other side of this unit. And very easily I'm just taking this piece of wood and I'm going to line it up exactly where I want it. And then I'll just place my mark on here. Again, no tape measure is going to be required for this. And with this mark, take it to the table saw and get it cut. And we'll test this, this. That'll be perfect. That'll go right in there. Got one more to cut now. One of the other operations that's very important to do before you assemble it is to be able to put the holes in for the adjustable shelves. And I have found that one of the simplest, easiest ways to do this is to be able to use just a scrap piece of pegboard and be able to drill the holes. Now put a piece of tape on that drill bit to be able to uh, have the correct depth and I can literally clamp this in place and drill all the holes very very quickly and it works fantastic and with it pre-painted drilling the hole this way makes it where that paint will not get into the hole because it's already pre-painted now i know there's a lot of fancy jigs out there that you can use to be able to put these holes in but again why complicate the situation when you can just use a simple piece of pegboard to be able to accomplish the same thing now I'm putting these holes in on every single one, but you can space it out. You could go with every other hole if you wanted, or you could actually decide on how you wanted the shelves to be arranged and maybe only put in two or three holes per shelf to be able to make small adjustments. But because I don't know how this bookcase is really going to be used by the recipient, then I decided to put in enough holes so that this person could make all the adjustments necessary for the various shelves. To set this up, all I needed to do was make one line for the center point 
and the center point of the pedboard, and that's it. The line is simple and easy, and it works for both sides. The most important thing you have to remember is to make sure you use the right drill bit. Now these pegs that I'm using call for a 3 16 drill bit. And quite frankly, that was a little bit tight. But if I went with the next size up at 13 64s, it was too loose. The magic number was the five millimeter drill bit and it absolutely worked perfect. So with all of this prep work done, it's time now to be able to put the glue into the dados and assemble everything. Now you notice I have the dados. Again, this is something that I typically don't use, but I know this is a very strong joint and it's going to take a lot of abuse moving this big, huge craft table from the center of the room off to the side from time to time for the different activities that will be occurring. So I'm using the dados. Now, if you've been following uh, the videos, I just recently made a jig to make the perfect dado. And I'm not showing that in this video. However, I do have an upcoming video that I'm going to show you how to use the table saw fence, making dados like this with that very simple jig. It's something that you just don't see anywhere out there in the YouTube land. Of course, I use the glue on the rabbit joints as well. And then I'll use the pipe clamps to be able to clamp everything together. From there, I'll make sure that this entire cabinet is nice and square. And once all that is done, then I will use the nail gun. And I'm using a 1 inch 18 gauge brad uh, staple. Now that staple is actually a lot stronger than the nail itself. Again, that is a choice to be able to make this cabinet as strong as possible. It's time to add the back of this cabinet. And this is a quarter inch piece of plywood that I'm using. And of course it was pre-painted, so I don't have to deal with painting the inside of the cabinet. And now it's time to do one last check just to make sure that everything is square. Because this quarter inch back is going to help keep this bookcase very stable. And it needs to be square because this is the last chance that you have to be able to make sure that it's square. And with that completed, it's time to nail on this backing. Now again, I'm using an 18 gauge, one inch long staple to be able to secure this quarter inch plywood into position. And I have one side nailed on now, and I'm just going to double check just to make sure it's better safe than sorry to be able to ensure that it's perfectly square. And fortunately, it is. So I can continue nailing the rest of this plywood onto the uh, back of this bookcase. It's time now to add this veneer strip to the face of this bookcase. This only takes about five minutes to be able to do and this will be the last step before painting. Of course I had to putty all the holes from the uh, staples but that's okay. When this is sanded and have that final paint on you won't be able to see them at all. The bookcase is now finished. Now, of course, it's sitting upside down on the workbench, but that's okay. It's all painted, everything's been touched up, and it's now time to set this outside of the shop and get started with the next section. Thank you for watching today. I really appreciate you sticking around and participating in this series on making this art studio really, really nice. Having the art desk with a full extension drawer is very nice. This art table, which is gonna be the centerpiece of the entire room, being that it's 42 by 72 inches, that's a big table. With the bookcase on one end and a five drawer cabinet on the other end, it's gonna be able to serve as a major, major workpiece in this studio. I hope that you choose to follow along with the rest of this series. And if you do, by all means, Make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that little uh, bell notification down there also so that you'll be, be notified on the different videos. And I look forward to seeing you real soon. So for now, bye-bye. Can't wait to see you back in this shop.